Who will call the June 5th meeting to order. Join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we open our meeting with uh, public comments. Anybody wishing to address the board on an item that's not on the agenda, come forward at this point, identify yourself, and please limit your comments. Hi, I'm Karen Johnson Leitner, 15735 38th Street, Mayor, Minnesota. I'm not representing the Hollywood Township Board, the Carver County staff, the Carver County Attorney's Office, the Carver County Commissioners. I am a relevant public watchdog. Last week, I attended, the last time that you had a commissioner's meeting, I attended, and um, a comment was made about the Met Council, and I think Carver County is confused, maybe, on how they think that they actually control the Met Council. I will find in the next couple months, I will disagree with them, and then I'll have the actual articles that prove that they are not in control of the Met Council. And what ends up happening is, when we go back to the radio tower, in 1999, um, the pro broker of the actual cell of the radio tower, which Carver County put their emergency communication system on, he was not only the ex-Minnesota Broadcasting um, president, he was also the broker of the deal, but he also was on the Met Council. He attended meetings in March of 2000, and boy, he got pretty rough with us. He, he pretty much told us what we were going to do. But luckily, there was four citizens at that meeting that decided that they were going to fight him. So then he showed up again in August of 2000. Now, when you think that a person that was on the Met Council has this much power to be a broker, and the tower went up in November of 1999, and he's sitting in March of 2000 telling us, the people, and Carver County never brought an attorney out there, and they never brought a commission, commissioner out there, no one was there to protect us. But as you know, the story goes, in 10 years, I got that shut down because it was a danger to the community. The same thing is happening with solar. <laughs> solar is a Met Council game plan to take over District 4 and District 5. If you choose not to pull that out of the comp plan, you just gave away our District 4 and District 5. You just gave the disclosure of those people that live out in those communities in that rural area to be able to say to them, well, gee, I guess if a realtor comes there, you've got to disclose that if any possible where there might be an application or a conditional use permit that you could have a solar field right next to you. And the crazy part about it, all these solar people show up here, and never once does anybody ask them, do you think we could reduce our electricity just by each personal person trying to reduce it? Never a word. All these work sessions you have are basically your game plan, not on video, to be able to Take the information, create a commissioner's meeting where you say, and a, a planning commission where you say you, the citizens have the right to speak. You choke them off at five minutes, and then the sad part about it is after all that great information, you never tally it up and refocus it and redigest it and put it out there again. You set us up. But at five o'clock today, they're going to have elections filing cut off. I am excited to know that at District 4, we have now a vehicle to put in the next couple months all what has been done wrong. You're each all responsible for some of the heartache you've given to people, 25-year leases for solar applications, not caring about lightning, not caring about anything of those people. Kids come here and they're only nine <laughs> years old, and you don't even look at them and say what they've got to live next to. The day's coming, the Met Council, you better pull it out of that comp plan, what they say about solar. Because you know what? When you vote, you're not voting for the people. You're voting in fear. And that's carnival barking when you start talking about getting sued. Do better, do better, do better, do better. This is going to be a great election year. Thank you. Anybody else want to uh, speak this morning? Thank you. Introduce yourself. Noah McCourt, 33 West Lake Street, Waconia, Minnesota, apartment 404. I wanted to come up here today and express a variety of concerns uh, with the county's inability to respond to data requests effectively. I submitted a request to uh, the county on March 14th. They didn't get back to me until May 9th. 
uh, despite state statutes citing that the responsible authority or designee should comply, if possible, uh, to the subdivision within 10 days of the request um, because I am the subject of the data that I requested. Um, as I'm sure that some of you are aware, the Department of Administration actually issued a complaint st stating that uh, Carver County is currently in violation of the Data Practices Act. Um, and I, my larger concern is that factor because Hennepin County was actually recently sued and the Minnesota Supreme Court found that there was substantial evidence that Hennepin County's missteps in responding to Webster's, uh, in, in, in responding to an individual request uh, led to the conclusion that existing procedures were insufficient to meet statutory requirements. I do not think that Curver County's um, current methods meet the statutory requirements, and I do not think that, um, and, and, and the Department of Administration does not view it that way either. Um, I would strongly encourage the county to update its procedures on fulfilling data requests because this procedure is just absolutely terrible practice. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to say a few words this morning? Uh, seeing none, we'll continue on with item D, the new employee introductions, and we're going to change a little bit. Uh, Mr. Mark Metz, our county attorney, has a new employee he'd like to introduce. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Thanks for the opportunity to introduce one of our newer employees. It's really a pleasure to introduce Jenny Pinnell. She's our veterans court coordinator, and she's been with the county for a little bit of time right now, but you'll recall that we started a veterans court um, probably six, seven years ago in close coordination with all our partners and, and uh, Judge Kane and the courts and court services and, and the mentors and the, and the veterans, and it's really been a successful program, and it, it focuses on getting the intensive services and help for our veterans that find themselves in our criminal justice system. We've had, I think, close to 10 graduates it's really a moving and touching um, scene when you see these graduates that go through a really intensive program of supervision, of consequences, of treatment, and get their life back in order. And one of our goals was to get a veterans court coordinator that could help us because, frankly, most of the individuals that are working with this, they go above and beyond their regular duties to take on the tasks of being in this veterans court. And so with this support of this board, who's been committed from day one, which I thank you, um, who backed this program with your support, but also financially as well, and we were able to get a partial grant to hire this veterans court with a match from you. And so it really is a pleasure that I introduce Jenny. She's an attorney. She has a really nice, thorough background and is highly skilled. She worked with the appellate, um, Defender's Office and uh, is so committed to this program and works so closely with us and we're just taking this program to a new level. So I'd like to give her an opportunity to maybe talk about herself a little bit more and, and talk about what her role is. Thank you. Jenny, welcome. Thank you very much, Chairman. Hopefully Mark left you enough time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Degler, Commissioners, thank you for having me. My name is Jenny Pinno, and I was recently hired in March as the part-time Veterans Court Coordinator for Carver County. As the Court Coordinator, I'll plan, implement, administer, and coordinate all of the day-to-day -day activities in the Veterans Court. I serve as the point person for the information about the Veterans Court program, attend staffings and court hearings, monitor and supervise Veteran Court services, and the mentor program. I facilitate community presentations, develop and distribute community resources, maintain the accounting and auditing system with respect to the veterans court funds, track data, and prepare reports, and organize and coordinate the trainings for our veterans court team. This is the first time that Carver County has had a veterans court coordinator, and I know that the board has been supportive of the veterans court program, and we've had some good success with our program by way of reducing recidivism and increasing public safety. <coughs> to tell you a little bit about myself, I was born and raised in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I moved to the United States following high school and did my undergrad and law degree in the United States. I worked as an attorney at Legal Action of Wisconsin helping seniors on various civil matters 
And then, and then prior to that, I did criminal felony appeals for the state of Illinois. I live in Eden Prairie with my husband and two small children. And working in the Veterans Court appeals to me not only because it's consistent with my prior um, criminal justice field experience, but I find it truly fulfilling work. I enjoy being part of a collaborative team, working outside of the traditional um, court system to solve problems of justice-involved veterans who have treatable mental health and chemical use disorders. Our treatment court is ever mindful of the fact that our veterans have paid a high cost in their service to our country. We recognize the unique needs of justice-involved veterans and individually tailor a program that ultimately improves the lives of not only the veterans, but the families as well. I appreciate the opportunity to serve in this capacity and thank you very much for your continued support of our Veterans Court program. Well, thank you for what you're doing <coughs> with our veterans. Uh, sounds like you've got an active role already. Uh, how many veterans are currently in the system? Currently, we have 10 veterans in our, in our program. Thank you. Our tradition is to come around and shake hands with everybody. Great. Thank you. Two demerits. She <laughs> <laughs> lives in Hennepin County. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll move on to other new employees. And the first one will call up Ms. Heidi Hawks to introduce our new library system administrator. Heidi. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, in 1986, technology came to Carver County Library in the form of an automated card catalog. We've gone through many phases since then, many different types of technology. And to lead our newest phase of technology, I am very proud to introduce a gentleman with a background that is not only varied, but it has the breadth and depth of all areas of technology and I'm going to allow him to speak specifically about that as well as a little personal information. So would you join me in welcoming our newest library systems administrator, Bob Lincoln. Welcome Bob. Thank you, Heidi. Do they still use the paper card catalog? Well, some people do. <laughs> Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Bob Lincoln, and I'm thrilled to be here as a part of the Carver County Library. Um, I have a background in education. I just finished 22 years as a uh, teacher, elementary teacher in grades uh, one, two, three, and four, and then a media specialist in grades kindergarten through fifth grade, media specialist, school librarian. Um, on an average year, I would read between 220 and 250 books, and uh, many of those children's books and over this period of 22 years, technology has completely transformed uh, media centers, school libraries, public libraries, and I've embraced the technology and had a, had a joy um, as a school librarian seeing more and more technology with all sorts of different devices and uh, wireless technologies and all sorts of digital tools to help kids be creative. And um, this past year, I was a digital learning coach, digital learning coordinator. So I helped teachers and students get better with technology, both in production and creating and in um, academics. So I have a long history of technology in a business world. Before I became a teacher, I was a corporate trainer for a couple of different companies in the technology field. So teaching um, staff how to use the technology that restaurants were using. And I believe as a part of the first touchscreen technology. Uh, I was one of the trainers in uh, a restaurant chain. So now touchscreen is so common, we are used to it, it's like intuitive, but 20 years ago it wasn't, and people had to learn how to, you know, touch those buttons. So um, I've seen technology come a really long way. I'm really excited to be a part of the uh, county library system as the administrator, and um, 
there's so many new technologies, maker spaces, and all sorts of really neat production tools, green screen and video editing that I just have a passion for, and I'm really excited to be a part of the county as we continue to grow in that area. Um, on a personal note, I have lived in Chaska for seven and a half years, I believe, and just recently bought a house down on Prairie Street, and um, right, it's Prairie Street, and uh, yes. Yes. Uh, love it, and, and so my son and I live there. I have a 16-year-old son, um, a brilliant mathematician. He hopes to be a, a mathematician or an engineer, so he's uh, going into his junior year. So we're happy to live here in the community and to be a part of the, the county and the county library. So thank you very much. Welcome, Bob. You might say touch screen is uh, intuitive. Everybody knows how to do it. Well, maybe our kids do, but some of us are still <laughs> struggling. Like, we like to push buttons. Yeah. Well, Welcome. So, thank you. Come and shake hands with everybody. And with that, we'll continue our uh, new employees. Mr. Jim Running, the IT manager, as a systems engineer. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, commissioners. Um, with all of our changing technology at Carver County, I'm really pleased to reintroduce um, <laughs> our new senior engineer, Brian Malinsky. And I say reintroduce, I don't know if you recall, but Brian worked here for four years. Uh, he left to go to Wright County for a couple of years, and he, he, came, and he, he truly came back to the Wright County to join us again. Um, while he was gone, though, Brian uh, was able to um, earn his uh, CCNA, which is a highly coveted certificate in uh, Cisco Engineering. And part of Brian's new responsibilities uh, will be supporting the Carver Link program with Randy Lease which we hadn't done before, and we're gonna start doing some support in that network arena as well. So I'd like to introduce Brian Malinsky. Welcome, Brian. Uh, I have to admit that I was down in the IT area this morning <laughs> well before eight o'clock, and Brian was there. So this is our second introduction this morning. Welcome, Brian. Chairman, commissioners, uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to come back to Carver County from Wright County. Um, I don't know what more I can add that Jim hasn't already said. I'm familiar with the, the networking and the infrastructure of, uh, of Carver, so I'm hoping the transition back is fairly seamless. Uh, just a quick question, where do you live? If we get I out? live in Buffalo currently. Well, it's <laughs> a little thing that takes time. But. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. With that, we'll move on with our agenda, the re agenda review and adoption. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion by second. Commissioner Lynch, second by Commissioner uh, Workman. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item number three, the approval of the minutes from the May 15th regular session. Move approval, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Motion Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Ishii, second by Commissioner Maluchnik. Uh, to approve any discussion all in favor of that motion say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries uh, Item number four community announcements. Does somebody have something they'd like to share with the audience? Uh, I'll just have two quick things uh, The first one is if you don't have kids or if you have grandkids, you know, they have car seats You got to have the right size car seat. Is it the right size for that child? Is it positioned right? Well, we always ask ourselves these questions. Well, we have an opportunity, a free car seat check at the Chaska Fire Department on June 14th, that's next week, um, from four to seven. It's, they request to have appointments uh, scheduled so everybody has plenty of time. So give the Chaska Fire Department a call and they will fit you in and get that car seat checked out. And the other thing I'd like to mention is we just finished the 101 bridge 
last year, a year ago, whatever, and they have to do some restriping. So expect some short delays next week, starting June 11th, weather permitting. They're going to restripe, and sometimes restriping takes a little longer because they have to make sure it's grooved and striped and whatever. But just be expecting on the 101 bridge um, some delays next week. Any other community announcements? If not, we'll move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda has a variety of issues, um, starting with the Chenasson audiovisual equipment for the library. We have donations to Encore. We have approval of contracts. We have approval of community uh, engagement events. MnDOT agreements for Highway 25 and 20 intersection projects. Again, a MnDOT agreement for the Highway 5 and 33 roundabout project. We have a legal services agreement for Highway 41 project. We have some AIS training, natural resource block grants, uh, furniture contracts. We have right of way acquisitions for Highway 41. We have an agreement for temporary easement for Highway 41. Metropol Metropolitan Council Regional Solicitation Funding. We're going to advertise for the sale of some county-owned property. And we have a contract for Highway 33 and 34 roundabout. We have some policy updates, uh, FTE adjustments for human uh, and Health and Human Services Division, the regular abatements, elevator maintenance contracts, and commissioner warrants. Anything that should be pulled from the consent? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent? So motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion by Commissioner Maluchnik, second by Commissioner Ishii. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chair? Commissioner I'd like Lynch. Make, I'd like to make a motion to recess as the county board and convene as the Carver County Regional Rail Authority. Is there a second, second to that motion? Motion by Commissioner Lynch, second by Commissioner Workman to adjourn as the county board and reconvene as the regional rail. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> we are now the regional rail authority. And with that, we'll turn it over to Mr. Marty Walsh, the Parks and Recreational Director. Marty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We're waiting just a moment here for the system to become active here and have a short presentation regarding um, our um, agreement with the Regional Rail Authority. So hang on a second here. When you say our agreement, who is Joint the our? Joint Powers Agreement with the Regional Rail Authority. Thank you. And so here we go. So sorry, I needed my glasses to see that. Um, you're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I laid them down and then I realized it needed. So just a little bit of background here. Uh, Bill, if Bill could turn on the monitors, that'd be helpful. Thank okay. you, Bill. Take it away, Marty. Okay. Just a little bit of background here for you. Um, the Carver County Regional Oil Authority was created by the county board uh, back in 1987 under uh, Chapter 398A. So it is a... Um, something that is recognized, uh, um, you know, throughout the state statutes. Um, Carver County has rail road properties. You're familiar with the Dakota Rail Corridor and portions of the, of the former Union Pacific Railroad Corridor. You also have the ability to act in other matters on rail and rail transportation under that chapter. And hey, Marty, could I inter interrupt you? Could you just yes. move the mouse to see if that gets our monitors on? Yeah. He can continue. Okay. Um, you are a separate... Um, unit of government. So thus the, the convening and adjourning as a regional rail authority. So it is recognized that you have uh, multiple hats, if you will, as uh, members, if you, as members, but you're members of the county board and you are members of the regional rail authority. Uh, you, lever, you levy separate from the county. So you have your own taxing authority as a regional rail authority. And funding for that is provided for staff, for our, my time and for others that are working um, on matters of the Regional Rail Authority. Carver County employees, uh, our employees perform work, if you will, uh, whether it's legal, risk, budgeting and accounting, 
um, ER and administrative and other services that are provided by Carver County employees uh, for the Regional Rail Authority. Over time, we've had some discussion about kind of the arrangement, if you will, about um, the topic of liability, liability for um, board and liability for employees. And you know, through the research, what research has been done by the county's attorney's office, we're really kind of recognizing that although the board itself is covered uh, for liability protections, because it is a, is a board and, and again created under that <laughs> chapter, the Carver County employees that are working for the Regional Rail Authority or providing guidance and so forth for Regional Rail really are not covered because we don't have an agreement at this point in time. Um, other Regional Rail Authorities have entered into uh, joint powers agreement with the local units of government, so local county units. And examples there are both Dakota County and, and Ramsey County. Both the County Attorney's Office and the Public Works Division here are recommending that we go forward with a joint powers agreement. Under the joint powers agreement, employees uh, will continue to provide service to the Regional Rail Authority. Employees will remain Carver County employees. We won't be employees of the Regional Rail Authority, just like through other joint powers agreements. The Regional Rail Authority will pay nothing additional for our services, for our employee services. The joint power agreement has an indefinite term, so it's not set to expire, but can be amended and can be terminated. Uh, and Carver County, the Carver County Regional Rail Authority, uh, retains other abilities to act as a regional rail authority. So you're not giving up anything in terms of your powers of a regional rail authority. You are contracting with Carver County uh, for the services that we are currently providing. But should you find some other services uh, that we don't specialize in or that you would like to have, the regional rail authority has that ability to, to move forward uh, along those lines. So with that, Mr. Chair, we are uh, recommending a motion to approve the Joint Powers Agreement and to authorize the Board Chair to sign. And this would again, just like all, all our other agreements, go through the County Attorney's Office in risk management. And then I'd open it up for any questions you may have. Any questions for Marty? Uh, seeing none, uh, the, the requested action is a motion to approve the Joint Powers Agreement between Carver County and the Carver County Regional Rail Authority and authorize the board chair and the county engineer to sign. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ishii, second by Commissioner Workman. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Marty. And with that, is there a motion to adjourn as a regional rail and reconvene as a county board? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Lynch, second, second. by Commissioner Mluchnik. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And 7.1 is to discuss this joint powers agreement as a county board. Marty. Uh, Mr. Chair, I won't repeat myself. <laughs> Please. Um, you, uh, as the board, now have the opportunity to act as the joint powers, uh, on the joint powers agreement as the county board. So uh, you publicly now have turned your hat back to the Carver County Board. I'd stand for any questions that you have. As a county board, does anybody have any questions for Marty? Commissioner Workman. Well, Ms. Mr. Chairman, Marty did a, a good job, uh, but boy, this is uh, this is all government right here. This thing. Uh, sorry, I'm delaying the vote uh, a minute or two, but um, boy, this is attorneys at work here. Um, nothing seeming, seemingly changes uh, except behind the big black curtain. So, I'm ready to to vote in support of it. Okay, is that a motion, Commissioner Workman? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Workman, second by Commissioner Ishii. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chair and members. With that comes to item 7.2. <clears throat> we have a vacancy on the county library board uh, for District 3. And <clears throat> Commissioner from District 3 is uh, Mr. Randy Maluchnik. Randy. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to make a motion that uh, the Carver County Board of Commissioners appoint Mr. Matthew Underman to the Carver County Library Board to serve an unexpired term. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Maluchnik, second by Commissioner Ishii. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to talk about Mr. Underman. He's an author. He wrote a, a book about uh, baseball parks in America and he 
spent some time traveling around the country, uh, taking a lot of photographs and uh, discussing the particulars. And so uh, what's very important is that him and his lovely bride have a very young, pretty little blonde haired girl who is very interested, I know, in uh, going to the libraries So as time goes on. So we have an author and a person that's interested in young people utilizing libraries. So I think he'd be a very fine member of our as library board. As a member board. of the library board, we look forward to having him on the board. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we do have a new member of the Carver County Library Board. Uh, thank you. Moving on. Item 8.1, project update and Highway 41 expansion. Uh, as everybody knows, should know if you've driven Highway 41, there's going to be a lot of work there this summer. And Mr. Darren Melke, the Deputy County Engineer, is going to give us an update on what's going on there. Darren. Thank you, Board Chair. Just give me a minute to bring our presentation up here. And that's just about the delay that we're going to have if you're traveling 41. <laughs> <laughs> exact good segue into that one, Board Chair. <laughs> Take it away. Take it away. Well, yes, if, thank you for the intro. Um, if you have not noticed, there is going to be a very impactful community project on Highway 41 this summer. Um, the big impact will be starting next Monday. I have some the staff, uh, project team staff here that will give you more of an update as we go I along. I hope you have their, their phone numbers because everybody <coughs> might want to give them a call. <laughs> well, she'll, no. you'll, you'll soon find out our project has a phone number so Good. for people to call even. Good. So so we've kind of thrown everything out there for this project for people to get in contact with the project team. So, so far, I think it's been working quite well. So. How are we putting that, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, how, how are we putting that out? Because I know people want that number. How are people supposed to get that phone number? It'll be at the very end of this presentation, so Thank they you. can get it that way. Um, Stephanie will go through other methods that you can get in contact with our project team as well, whether it's uh, our uh, social media sites, a website, um, or you're just calling our office too. Sometimes we like to jump the gun. You would have probably obviously gotten to it if we had waited. Yes, yeah, so we have quite a delightful show for you to see. Take so. it away. <laughs> so. Well, Mr. Chairman, though, I'd like to make sure that, that particularly gets in real life in Shaska. Yes. So on that Facebook. There's a website, Real Life in Shaska, <coughs> that quite a few of us follow that's very important, and people do attend and they do look at it very often. It's about 4,000 people, so that's yeah. important. I, yeah, I do follow the same one, so I know uh, um, Paula, I think, has been very yes. active as posting things on there as the admin, too, so it's been very helpful to get the word out. So, yeah. Well, if uh, I guess more for the audience than the county board is that we have a project on State Highway 41. Carver County is the lead agency, even though it's a state highway. Um, MnDOT and the City of Chaska are very active partners in this project as well. They both are financially involved um, through this. Um, we actually started uh, the construction project in, uh, I'd say, early May. Some work started to happen there, with, you know, with the delayed spring and the snowstorm decided to happen in April. It kind of got pushed back a little bit, but um, at this point, it's it's still on track. Um, we still have a, a closure um, that we'll talk about coming up next Monday. Um, that'll probably be the most impactful uh, 12 weeks during the summer months. But I guess for the community enhancements, if you can get through that. Um, the enhancements that you'll see at the end is we'll have uh, four lanes instead of two lanes, so some significant capacity improvements, uh, intersection improvements. Um, there'll be a pedestrian tunnel that will connect uh, the west side of the road by Lake Grace to the east side trail system. Uh, I think a lot of people are looking forward to that. Um, there'll be 80 compliant intersections where they are quasi that now. Um, no, there'll be a noise wall on the, le um, the west side of the road by the Jonathan Association properties or residents that live along that side. And for the people on the east side, there'll be some landscaping work that'll happen next year in 2019 with a separate project that MnDOT and the city of Chasker are undertaking. So, of course, it's going to take a little time for those plants to uh, mature and develop, um, but that is, is kind of an offset on that side of the road. So, um, with that, I have two key members of our project team. I have Chad Foles, who'll start it off first. He's our um, construction manager, project manager um, with Bolton and Mink. He's overseeing the construction activities of the contractor on site. And at the very end, I'll have uh, Stephanie Ross. She's with HGR. She's our communications consultant. Um, she, along with one of, uh, many of her team members, are very active with pushing the info out and uh, managing our uh, Facebook, Twitter pages, as well as email updates that come out that people can sign up for. Um, they've also been taking phone calls that come to our projects um, to help people kind of navigate through how do I get around this project. So, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chad. 
and he'll walk through kind of where we're at with the project and where we're going. For the Welcome, rest of the Chad. Well, good morning. Just <coughs> <coughs> advance with this oh, arrow on here. Here, 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 here. Well, as you know, we have started construction out on Highway 41. It wasn't a, a secret when that started. Uh, the traffic maps kind of blew up there for a little while, but uh, we seem to have things settled down and I think people have uh, experienced their new normal for a commute getting through Highway 41 and particularly the Hunter Mark Road uh, intersection. We are coming to the end of what we call stage two, which is essentially, I don't know if your monitors are up and working yep. yet, but uh, up on the screen there's uh, basically a, a graphic that shows where we're currently under construction on southbound Highway 41 and the western uh, leg of Hunter Mark Road and the eastern leg by 212 Medical Center. Uh, the expectation is, is that by Saturday evening we've got uh, Highway 41 southbound uh, paved and striped so that it can move traffic then to the newly constructed side and then we'll start working on the northbound lanes adjacent to 212 Medical Center, uh, retaining walls, uh, things like that going on uh, in that part of the closure. To date, it's been mostly um, a lot of utility relocation uh, in this area. It's a big uh, intersection that has a ton of utilities in it. Uh, and so we've been having contractors working on the uh, temporary signal that's at that intersection, moving all of the private utilities, and then giving a little bit of room to the contractor to go in and work on the road. Um, so we should see, and as Darren mentioned, uh, by Saturday evening, having things pretty well in place for a traffic switch on Highway 41, and as well as the overall detour to come into place. And I think I'll just jump to the detour first. So here is the detour route, if you're not aware, uh, Highway 212 uh, going east from Highway 41 to Powers Boulevard and then back on Lyman Boulevard to Highway 41 uh, up to the north. And so what's in red on this graphic is the actual road closure. That's basically from the north side of the Hunter Mark Road intersection to the south side of the Pioneer Trail intersection. Uh, both of those intersections uh, will be built under traffic under certain stages and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit here in a minute. Um, we expect that road closure to happen actually Sunday night uh, while traffic levels are low and so we're not involved and engaged with the, the morning commute traffic on Monday morning. Uh, you'll start seeing signs being erected yet this week we takes a little while to get everything into place so there will be some signage that will be out there that is uh, in advance of the detour uh, if it's conflicting with existing signs they'll be covered uh, up until the time the detour is actually uh, deployed Sunday night um, and we do have uh, provisions in the contract for state patrol to be on site Monday through Friday uh, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. to primarily be at the Hunter Mark Road intersection to ensure one that traffic uh, is flowing safely but also uh, to ensure that the emergency services vehicles at 212 Medical Center can get in and out uh, from their facility during this time. So that's one big provision that we've got already uh, set and will be deploying already Monday morning uh, for that. Um, so we have what we call stages, we're gonna start going into stage three, which is the, the full closure, but it also, we have three phase construction, three phases of construction at the uh, intersections of Hunter Mark Road and Pioneer Trail we can only work on a piece of it at a time while maintaining traffic. So even though traffic is um, moving through, um, and I should have probably stated too, aside from the main big detour, there's also a local access route that's signed for business access, and that is Hunter Mark Road and Pioneer Trail. Uh, 
it's yet to be seen how many people will take the formal detour and who will use the local access route. Um, we had, it's been my experience that it takes about a week for people to start to figure out what's the best path I should take now that my, my normal path is interrupted. So we, you'll see delay at Pioneer Trail and at Hunter Mark Road, um, even though there's local access moving through it. Um, but we do have wayfinding signs and we do have, like we said, the law enforcement things there to try and help with uh, traffic movements. Um, as a part of those, those uh, pieces of construction at the intersections and even along Highway 41, there's gonna be trail and sidewalk closures in those zones where we're constructing. And there will be alternate pedestrian routes signed for those. Um, primarily Hunter Mark Road and Pioneer Trail have, we can alternate um, sidewalk areas once uh, certain pieces of sidewalk and roadway become closed. Um, the Hunter Mark Road intersection will continue to operate under the temporary signal until the detour is off and a permanent signal is in, the Pioneer Trail intersection will be managed with a three-way stop. Um, so there'll be stop signs on the three legs that are open. Um, and so people will have to uh, look at for the lane assignments uh, and know which way, which lane to be in to either make a turn or go straight on those. And that each one of those phase constructions in the intersections takes about a month to five weeks to get through. So we'll keep bouncing around in the intersections. And so you should be looking for communications uh, in advance of our traffic phasing switches as we move to different phases in those intersections. And then this final slide is more about, you know, the full closure is uh, a 12 week closure and it, it's almost plopped right in the middle of the school summer break, which helps with the, some of the traffic management issues uh, in that corridor. Uh, we do have provisions in the contract uh, for early completion incentives. Um, and so the contractor does have an opportunity uh, to make some incentive money if they can advance the construction enough uh, to qualify for that. Uh, if they take their full amount of time, it will go up to roughly Labor Day, uh, but they can, by contract, advance, I think it's 12 days maximum. Um, but it's already a tight, tight schedule, so improving upon Labor Day is, is just a, it's a treat, more or less. Um, and then stage four for us is essentially uh, restoring the medians that we tore out in the first part of the project and reestablishing them on Hunter Mark Road and Pioneer Trail and the uh, south leg of Highway 41 between uh, Highway 212 and Hunter Mark Road. Um, project completion late September, that's primarily to just get a lot of the miscellaneous items cleaned up, uh, turf establishment um, going, things like that, but nothing that would require uh, lane closures or traffic interruption for that. So uh, the goal is to have everything pretty well buttoned up by Labor Day. So, Chad, um, what is the hours of operation? I mean, if you give an incentive to get the job done, are, can they work later? Can they work earlier? What's the... They're, uh, they're going to be working six days a week, Monday through Saturday, uh, as weather allows. And their current schedule is approximately 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. There's going to be times where they'll be working beyond 7 p.m., uh, particularly for water main connections, uh, traffic switches where it's, it's uh, easier to accommodate the traffic switches at past 7 p.m., um, things like that. But the bulk of the work uh, and the bulk of their work days will be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Any questions for Chad right now? Thank you. All right. Uh, I, as much as a person sometimes doesn't like to see a highway patrolman sit there, but that's a calming effect when traffic is backed up. Uh, something a, about that highway patrolman sitting there takes you. 
a deep breath. And it's a calming effect, and it also <coughs> curbs poor driving behaviors. So exactly. uh, we've seen a number of those too. So, all right. Oh, it's Stephanie. Welcome, Stephanie. Good morning. So I'm going to go through some of what we've put together with the project team and Carver County as part of a more comprehensive public engagement program for this project. Really doing some things that I don't think that the county has entered into before to see if we can really get to the community with a focus on access to information as well as uh, preparedness for this construction project. So. That effort started with brand development. You've seen the nice Carver County colors revamped on some of these slides. Uh, that is mainly to make sure that the project is recognizable within the community. And then Darren had mentioned that we also created project specific email address and phone number for this project, which is just an effort to get people to the project team more quickly and not have to bounce through the county system if they're even aware that it is a county project. So that was part of the branding effort as well was to make sure that we were able to get people to the right resource quickly. Um, one of the staples of this project is a new project website. We revamped the project <coughs> website, moved it over to the county URL. We gave it a friendly URL, which is what you see right there. Um, I'm not gonna click, do you want me to click into it now? We'll wait for a minute and I can, I can walk you through some of that. Uh, but what that does is it makes it a little bit more suitable for some of our project materials, makes it a little bit more memorable for the public. And that project website actually does include a number of goodies on it. So we do have, this is part of what we're hoping you will see for a multitude of projects in the future. I'm just gonna close out of that. <laughs> um, we do have uh, our EarthCam cameras right here. We have some detailed project information, the project schedule, You've seen some of our graphics, staging graphics, project maps. Um, we do have it both accessible and uh, PDF versions on this website um, as a nod to moving to a more um, accessible information resource. We also have this business specific resources section here. That's something that we put together uh, knowing that uh, businesses are gonna be communicating with their customers about this project, whether they want to or not. So these are things that are most applicable to some of those scenarios, um, including detour maps, um, linkable buttons that they can add to their website, uh, just so that they, as well as their employees and their networks, um, can stay up to date on the project. So if I click on a certain business, it'll tell me if it, when they're open or how, what's the easiest way to get there. It doesn't, it doesn't go into that much detail, but let me come back to that, because okay. I want to talk a little bit about what we've done for the business community. So now I'm gonna have to figure out, there we go, thank you. So uh, the other thing that I didn't hover on on the project <coughs> website, uh, Darren mentioned these weekly project email updates, that's something that we've been using, Carver County does use the Gov delivery system, so we've been uh, utilizing that to send out weekly project email updates. Those tend to come out on Wednesday afternoons following our Tuesday construction meeting. So that really is taking a lot of that information that uh, if there's someone who were to attend that, can be pretty engineering heavy. So we take that information, um, kind of revamp it into a plain language format and use graphics and different things to help communicate what is that latest construction information and that look ahead. I mentioned some of our maps and graphics that you've seen here. We also, as part of this program, really wanted to get in front of the public early on about the road closure. There's a lot of people in the Chaska community in particular who knew that this project was coming and we knew the minute that those orange and black traffic signs went up that said the project is starting, we would get a lot of people who reached out to ask when's the road closing. So we worked with Carver County to develop some road closure, road closure signage and strategically placed it around the project area so that drivers and trail users would be able to see and know that the project was starting but the road wasn't closing until early June. And that's been pretty effective. We have a, had a lot of people who've seen that and maybe you yourselves have seen that if you've been in the area. I also want to note that we have been active on social media. Darren mentioned that carrying forward those 
social media accounts that were set up during the design phase of this project. We've also been utilizing targeted Facebook ads, and maybe you guys know how those work. <laughs> But, Explain it to everyone. Uh, well, but maybe we'll save that for the end of the conversation. Oh, yeah. But those social media ads, uh, are you're able to target people. Here we're targeting geographically by who might be in the, Ch the Chaska area, pushing out information relevant to project resources as well as key milestones. We did have a Facebook ad that started today and will run through early next week that promotes the detour, uh, getting people prepared for that. So with the detour, we've taken that to a new level. We do have that static map that um, Chad had showed, but we also animated the detour. Um, we know that video is eye-catching. Um, it also does really well on social media. So there, this was kind of a two-part piece where we wanted to have something that was interactive on the project website. And we also wanted to have something that could get us a little bit more awareness on social media. So what this does is it's just simply animating that detour route that uses 212 Powers and Lyman. So this is about a 30 second video. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but it will do well with our social media audi audiences. Darren mentioned that um, we do have some crossover between that real life and Chaska as well as our project page. We sent, we ran a targeted ad this past month to build our following on that page so that we could then start pushing out some of this information and get both paid and organic engagement with our social media platforms. So I'm gonna go back and talk a little bit about, oops, the business outreach. So we put a concerted effort into talking to businesses in and near the project corridor, um, talking to them early, making sure that they had the information that they needed to move on with their daily lives and, and feel confident about the project. That was really what we wanted to um, get out of this effort. So we've met with nearly 60 businesses, that includes businesses within Jonathan Square and Chaska Commons, as well as some of our key stakeholders, that includes Chaska Community Center, um, Southwest Transit, as well as the school district. Those business meetings, we offered up project materials as well as project information. Um, I know it's hard to see in the corner here, but we have this five by five postcard that we uh, left everybody with. These are great because they fit on a countertop. They can be placed where people are naturally having conversations. It kind of takes some of the pressure off of the business to have to talk about the project if people are asking about it, they can hand over this card. It includes schedule information, what to expect, a map, as well as outline some of those project benefits. Because we know that sometimes that gets lost when we talk about construction. We just want to know when does it start, when is it over, and, and we don't necessarily get a lot of time to talk about what those benefits will be once the project is done. We also have created, this is where we've talked about whether or not people know business hours, how to get to businesses. In each one of these interactions, we've, asked, we've offered to make custom materials. Most often that's resulting in a detour map, particularly for people who have deliveries. So we've worked with Cub Foods, we've worked with Super America, and we talked to the Chaska Community Center, um, made them a map, because we know that um, you know, they're pulling from all over the community and not just people who might be in and near the project corridor. So that's been a really successful process so far. And then to complement those project email updates and going back to what we first talked about in maintaining access to the project team and information, we've also started weekly business meetings. I think the first one we did was almost three weeks ago. It's kind of a come and go format. Um, it's about a half hour, they're Wednesday mornings. Again, they follow that weekly Tuesday uh, construction meeting. It's an opportunity for businesses to come meet with the project team, talk candidly about questions, concerns, any challenges that they're having. We have the same information that is usually paired with that project email update, but again, it's giving people the ability to decide how much or how little they want to be involved in the project, and that's really what's important to us. So to kind of cap off all that information, it's also good to mention that we've partnered with the city of Chaska as well as the Southwest Metro Area Chamber of Commerce for this project. I know they were heavily involved in the design phase of the project. We've also continued those relationships. They've been happy to 
uh, repost our social media efforts, um, as well as I think the city has been posting our weekly email updates. We've been um, giving them the same type of information that we've been communicating about as a project team so that they're in the know every step of the way. And again, that continues some of that project confidence. And it also helps with message consistency because we know that people are going to Chaska when they talk about this project. So we want to make sure that we are able to get people to where they need to be quickly. <coughs> questions? Any questions? I was happy to see that when you showed your short animated detour route, you didn't have a tractor slowing down stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> <coughs> that might happen sooner or later. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead, thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Darren. Um, I guess if you didn't catch it, if, if you didn't catch the web address for the project site at all, um, if you just go, do a search, do Highway 41 Project Jonathan, it'll be your first <coughs> result that comes up. At least that's what it did for me. So um, all the different ways you can connect with the project are on that project website. So I would encourage everyone to check it out. And the last thing you mentioned was it's going to be a phone number up on the screen? Absolutely. And I can go right back to the, and if you can get to that project website, it is all on there. And I guess we, we really encourage people to go to the website, go to our project team, don't go to the city of Chester, don't go to Carver County, don't, right. don't go to MnDOT, because there's just we, um, so many agencies involved, people weren't sure where to go to. Yep. So, but on the right hand side, um, there's maps, but there's also a phone number. Uh, there's different ways to connect with us. So there's a phone number if you call. Um, you'll hear me answering the, the voicemail on, or message on there. Um, email contact or you can email us there's also Facebook a Twitter page the Twitter account actually just relays what's on our Facebook page so that's not actively maintained but it is getting info out there as well you can sign up for email updates as Stephanie mentioned um, and are also updating a uh, events list here so like the business meetings that we do have every every week will be on here too at some point so hopefully so, so if you're not sure don't hesitate to contact either call email whatever get the information whatever works best for the individual if you can get here um, whatever works best for you to follow the project and I, I'm sure you'll find a way that best suits their your needs so. any other Commissioner Workman <clears throat> well mr. chairman this uh, highway which I've driven on my entire life is been in such it's such a not good road to drive on that I'm not going to be impacted by this probably but I know a lot of people will what I find um, handy, and I'm asked as a county commissioner all the time, is when is it going to be open? And we have so many of these going on, it's really hard to have, uh, might need a spreadsheet on that. But will there be, and I know that the contractors have a certain amount of time and incentives and everything else like that. If if a sign at either end, and I don't know if this is happening, has a date, an approximate date of when, so that people, <coughs> people know because they, they don't know. And so if they really need to use it, or they're happening upon it, you know, July, uh, July 18th, uh, so they have, have an idea. Again, that's the sort of the number one thing I get. Um, and, I, and again, I often can't answer the question, so I'll get, I can give them your number and all sorts of other stuff. But if they, if the user of the road has a pretty solid idea about when that is supposed to be open, I find that very handy. So. Darren, can we expect this, like was mentioned, uh, Memorial uh, Labor Day at the latest? I guess that's what we're sh the contract is shooting for. So if they go beyond that, there's actually a penalty for them if they go beyond that date as well. So obviously they don't, they don't want it to have a penalty or liquidated damages as we call them either. So I think if weather cooperates or is you know a typical weather pattern for a normal Minnesota summer, I think we're shooting for end of August, opening this back up to the public. And as was mentioned, obviously Highway 41 does need repair. This is a state highway. The county and the cities are working with uh, the state to get projects done uh, slowly but surely. Correct. It'd be a good project when it's done. Any other questions, comments? Thank you very much for that update. No problem. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Everyone? Hope to see that everybody's <coughs> smiling when people talk to them in the future. So yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, 9.1, 2018, uh, yeah, 2018 Carver County five-year bridge <sighs> resolution. Uh, again, Darren. Thank you, Board Chair. Shift gears a little bit, go, go a little bit bigger picture and longer range planning, not so immediate uh, this summer. Um, this is kind of my annual little um, talk to the County Board about our bridge program, five year bridge program. Um, I guess some background is uh, the Carver County Board needs to adopt a, a five year bridge resolution, and the main purpose of that is to make a, a bridge replacement eligible for state bridge bonds or, in the case of a township, uh, town bridge funds. Um, MnDOT also uses our list for planning purposes to know how much to tell the legislature that, hey, we have this many projects on the waiting list or, or soon to be on the waiting list um, to give them an idea how much uh, maybe they would want, would want to think about bonding for the bridge program. Um, it has been a very successful statewide program. This has not just been good for just Carver County. It's statewide. It's been a very good program to replace deficient bridges, um, um, structurally non-sound bridges as well. So. Um, some caveats with the bridge program is there's a sufficiency rating that each bridge gets. It needs to be below a, a, a 80, uh, it's a 100 scale, so it has to be below 80 before it's even eligible to get uh, bridge, uh, bridge bond funds. Typically, most of our bridges are well below 50 before we even think about replacing them. Um, if it's maybe between 50 and 80, maybe there's some intermediate repairs we can do to keep it up there and lengthen the life of that bridge. Um, that sufficiency rating, although it's not the sole uh, thing we use, is helps prioritize when we do replace bridges are the priority order of those. Um, the uh, cost estimates that you see in the, the resolution that's in front of you today are just based on some past experience and again are somewhat of a ballpark, on, uh, definitely on the higher side for the replacement cost. So this is it. This is the res or the list of bridges that are in the resolution for you to, the board to consider today. I guess the easier one for me is what I handed out as a bridge map so you can actually see where these bridges are located. Um, there is a fair amount of bridges slated for this year. However, only uh, two in uh, the very northwest corner have funding at this point in time. Uh, there's one on County Road 20, Highway 20, just west of 33. And then there's one just south of it on Wagon Avenue. It's actually for Hollywood Township. Uh, we've been working on one just north of there too, but the township is still uh, debating between taking the bridge out completely and, and doing a dead end or cul-de-sac or replacing the bridge. So I don't think that one's gonna happen this year if they actually wanna put the bridge, or put a box called the project in there. Uh, we do have many other bridges. Um, there's one on the west end, very west end in Camden Township. Uh, I guess I forgot about that one. That is a true bridge that is starting up uh, in the middle of June. Um, I think it's Icon is the contractor that's gonna be doing that bridge replacement for the township. Um, and then we have four other ones kind of down the heart of Carver County that the plans are done. We're just waiting for bridge bond funds um, in order to construct those. So we'll see if we can actually get those in this year. We haven't shown obviously is doing them this year, but we'll see how the schedule plays out. But um, I would say the further out uh, the bridges are, the more f f flexible probably the years will be um, when they may actually happen, so. Two quick questions. Uh, the first one is, you said the deficiency rating of 80. At what point is it a safety hazard? Um, never. I mean, uh, sufficiency rating is more of a gauge on overall condition and even takes into account the channel that's going through that. So it's not an indication of its safety of the bridge. Um, the lower it is, it's just the more tired, as I like to say, the bridge is getting. So I mean, more, obviously more. everybody thinks of 35W. And sure. was there a, um, a, a deficiency rating on that bridge at all? Um, probably, a, a, probably a sufficiency uh, rating. They, all, all bridges have those. Um, it's whether what the load, what load that bridge can carry. So some of our bridges, I don't have it handy, but some of our bridges are load posted to a lower than than legal load. Um, so those bridges, if we left it at the legal load, it would be a safety issue. But that's the reason we put load restrictions on certain bridges. I just want to make sure that the public is aware that none of these bridges are a safety hazard and they all are being looked at and cared for. And the other question is, on the list of 
uh, bridges here, they're all in the townships. Is there no bridges in the cities, the eastern end of the county that need to be replaced or is there a different program for that? Um, the, the large cities, the, as we call them, MSA, MSAS cities um, inspect their own bridges. Uh, however, if it's on one of our roads, we still inspect those. However, it just happens that a lot of those either have been replaced or, or don't have a rating low enough to be replaced at this point in time. There is one that it's in the city of Carver, the very far eastern one that's actually downtown Carver that's on a city street. Um, that we still inspect, however, they're getting close to that 5,000 population. So that one will actually probably drop off our map and become theirs to, to look after. Any other questions for Darren? No. If not, uh, we have a requested action of a motion to adopt the 2018 Carver County five year bridge resolution. So move. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ishii, seconded by Commissioner Lynch. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Darren. All right, thank you, Board Chair. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn the regular session. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ishii, second by Commissioner Workman to adjourn. And we will be going into a work session right after this meeting to discuss some corridor studies, specifically Gallupin Boulevard, and also a financial update. With that, all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, and we are adjourned. Thank you very much.